a wife or a wife has been found by him. I know y'all, some of y'all in the dating pool wishing God would just send you somebody to make your life better and, 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 and hope somebody can play matchmaker for you. Don't y'all be talking about me. I ain't trying to make nobody matchmaker. Don't be trying to play matchmaker with me either. But God had a plan for Isaac because he had a promise to Isaac's father. But for 20 long years, Isaac and Rebecca had the problem of barrenness. Many of you right now are struggling with issues in your life that you've been struggling what seems like a lifetime. Think about this. Imagine in your, in, in your sanctified imagination that, that every time they, they tried to see it was met with emptiness. And then put yourself there. Every time you try to do something successful, you try to do something that you desire, it ended up being nothing but another barren event. I just probably shameful for the fact that his brothers had sons and daughters and were establishing themselves as princes and kings and yet he, the promised child, had nothing to show for 20 years. For 20 years, Isaac went to the place and prayed to God, invoked God, interceded for his wife his wife Rebecca, for 20 long years, he, he prayed to the Lord, Lord, just, you, you said that I'm the promised son now. If I'm the promised son, give to me the promise. And the Lord finally, finally heard Isaac's prayer. The first point I want to make to you is you can't do nothing without first talking to God. You gotta understand, it may take a while, but somebody said, have a little talk. When you tell him all about the trouble, he will hear your faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. Prayer brings forth the promise. I, I, I wish y'all got that. Prayer brings forth the promise. Isaac only had one thing to his name aside from the material things that were passed down to him because he was the promised son. The only thing else that he had to cling on to was the promise. His father told him that I was told to sacrifice you and as I was about to sacrifice you, God brought forth a miracle, a ram in the bush. You couldn't understand it then, but I understood it then that you were the promise. As Isaac pondered on the promise, he prayed to the giver of the promise. Don't ever stop praying to the giver of the promise. It may not come when you want, but he always comes on time. Prayer brings forth the promise. And the text says that because Isaac steadily prayed, he was consistent in his prayer. Even though it took 20 years, God favored him, and Rebecca finally conceives. But then when we see in the text that after Rebecca conceived, the Bible says that, that, that as she conceived, she found that what was inside of her was wrestling and was messing her up. You got to understand, sometimes the promise comes from consequence. But, but, and, and you got to realize, here's my next point, that just because the promise comes, don't deny the construct of the promise. Don't deny the constrictions of the promise. Sometimes we wait for a long time and it seems like God doesn't do anything to us. And even when we get the blessing, we find out there's some antagonism that comes with the blessing. I don't know about you, but have you ever, have you ever got blessed and all of a sudden it seemed like more hell came your way? It seemed like the more blessed you became, the more the fiery darts of Satan came towards you, the more you brought in as the Lord blessed you and enlarged your territory. And, and just as that one man prayed, oh, that thou would bless me in thee. It seems that the moment God blesses you, enlarges your territory, the enemy comes in like a flood and wants to wash everything away, wants to bring conflict into life, 
rush to do everything but let you enjoy the blessings. They were wrestling inside of her. They were struggling inside of her. They were doing everything but saying, come. And can I tell you, sometimes the craziness that goes on in your life is still nothing but the consequence of the blessings that they promised to you. You weary, you probably been pregnant, and you probably said to yourself that uh, that that I've had the pains of pregnancy, and being a man, I can't even talk, I can't even talk about that. I, I've never been pregnant. I don't want to be pregnant. If I do, y'all call the doctor. But one thing I can say is that even when the pains of the pregnancy comes, that brings about the reality that the promised child is coming. You gotta understand, even though she was experienced, she understood, even though she was experiencing pain, she still had some comfort somewhere. So she turns to the Lord. She says to herself, why must I even go through this? If, it's, if, it's, if, if a promise is worth this much, why, why must I go through this? Uh, why am I going through hell to bear somebody else's promise? Uh, the promise wasn't for me. Uh, the promise was to Isaac. Uh, why must I go through the hell of bearing the promise that God has to tell her? God has to break it down to her. God has to. She goes to the Bible. The Bible says she inquires of the Lord. She went to the Lord who gave the promise and said, look, you, I, I was brought into this thing. I, I didn't buy into this. I was brought into this. Uh, because I was brought into this. Uh, I know my husband wanted one thing. But if he get, if I have to go through the pain and the suffering to give him the promise, why must I? And God said, wait, hold up, hold up, slow your roll. I want you to understand something now, that what you're experiencing is unusual. Huh? Because not like, unlike your sister-in-laws who, who bear sons without pain, huh? and they bear sons that will come nations, huh? your son is the promised son, and your children are the promised children. Uh, they have to experience the pain uh, because one, it will be greater than the other. You got two nations on the inside of you. Because you have two nations on, on the inside of you. Uh, you have to understand that one will be greater than the other. The elder will serve the younger. And, and when they're born, uh, one will have the promise. Uh, and one will go about his business. The text does not tell her, tell us how she reacted after she inquired of God. But the, te the text does tell us that when in her days to be delivered was fulfilled, she brought forth twins. Let me put a pin right there and close out on this. You're going to have trouble doing your promise, pregnancy, but it will always come to fulfill the promise. <laughs> I wish I had somebody here who understand that God is not a liar. He's not a man that he should lie. Whatever he said, he's going to bring it to pass. And if he promised to bring you out, you just got to know he will bring you out without a doubt. Is there anybody here who said, I will trust in the Lord till I die?
seems like a long time to us is a short time in God's time. And God has a way of working things out for us that we don't even believe can be worked out. See, barrenness was a problem, but there's nothing impossible with God. I wish I had somebody shouting with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Conflict is a problem, huh? But there's nothing God cannot ease. Uh, uh, there's a lot of pain going on in the world right now. Can I tell you something? Earth has uh, no sorrow that heaven uh, cannot hear. Trust God uh, in the midst of the conflict inside of you. Trust God uh, in the midst of the war inside of you. Trust God uh, and know that He will. Uh, he will. He will make a way for you. God is the God who sees us in our desperate spaces, who sees us in our cast out spaces, who sees us in our barrenness, and still brings forth his promise to us. Let's pray. God, just as Isaac prayed to you on behalf of Rebecca, so too we pray on behalf of those who are bearing with dreams, bearing with promises, bearing with emptiness in their soul. And just as Rebecca conceived, but experienced the troubling of the pregnancy, but yet still prayed to you, and you brought her deliverance. So even now, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of crisis, in the midst of troubling times, we still pray to you. We look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look to you, the heels from which come by faith, to be our author, to be our deliverer. Thank you in advance for giving to us the promise. In Jesus' name, amen. Maybe somebody here this morning watching doesn't know Jesus is a part of your sin. We want to take this opportunity to invite you to know him as Lord and Savior. Maybe you are in a barren existence. Can I tell you, Jesus is faithful to lock, to look at you where you are and to tell you come unto him. I extend this invitation to Christian discipleship wherever you are, just as you are. Let God come into your life and in your barren. And lastly, I just want to thank you all in advance for your generous support. New Bethel, for those of you who have been giving faithfully, we thank you so much. You can see on the screen how you can give to us by physical address or by way of giving by virtually. However, we just thank you so much. We continue to ask you to solicit your prayer on behalf of our leadership, our country, our state, and your local municipalities, wherever you are, watching all across the spectrum of this stream. Thank you so much. Now, may the grace of God be with you, go with you. May his son's love fill you. May the communion of his most blessed Holy Spirit rest rule and abide with you now and always. And the people of God said, Amen. Go in peace. Be blessed. Though God is smiling on you.